In a moment. I have been waiting, operator. No, that's Kalima in Mexico. C-O-L-I-M-A. Hi, Lee. Hello. Uh, how'd you, how'd you enjoy lunch with Gail? I am happy to tell you that your wife was absolute charming company. I wish I could say the same for myself. I spent the whole time talking about my problems and grousing about work. Well, I'm sure Gail didn't mind that. What could have happened to that document from Mexico? I guess I can just call the post office and see what they'll tell Joe, I want to call Scotty. It's no use, boss. Come on. Let me try. Listen, I have told you and told I gave the man my word I would tell absolutely nobody where he is except for Laura. Yeah, who do you think you are, Joe? I am on your side, and you're just going to have to believe me. Look, the divorce is over. I'm not going to try and talk him into a damn thing. I just... He's my son, and I love him. I want to wish him a happy birthday. Tomorrow's his birthday. I don't know. Well, maybe you have to have a son to understand this. Lee, he's in Mexico in a town called Colima. Thank you, Joe. Operator, I want to call a Mr. Scott Baldwin in Mexico, in Colima. It, is that the... Colima. Colima, Mexico. If you need the address, it's Calle Abasolo, number 22. Abasolo. No, that's not possible, operator. Look, just uh, try Calle Abasolo, number 22. I see. Thank you. Well, he's moved out and they've disconnected the phone. Is there a forwarding number? No. I'm sorry. Thanks. I guess I'd better get on the phone and call the post office and have them put a tracer on that document from Mexico. Otherwise, Laura and Luke are going to have Joe Kelly's head in brochette. Well, I have tried everywhere. I tried the penthouse twice. I even tried Bobby. I cannot find Luke. You're still determined to have this uh, serious heart-to-heart -heart talk with him? Hey, I think it is my responsibility. I think it's rather old-fashioned. You don't like that? I didn't say I didn't like it. I think it's dear. I love you for it. I love you. So, when is this, where is this massively masculine heart-to-heart -heart going to take place? Oh, I thought probably the club would be as good a place as any. Oh, well, not the club. Oh, Rick, the club is full of cigar smoking old guys. That's not Luke Speed. Give the poor kid a break. Well, you know smoke, I mean? and I'm not old. Now, where would you suggest? I don't know, what? someplace a little warmer, a little more personal. Your place, my house, which is also your house. That's a very nice suggestion. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I just have to find Luke. You will. You just probably have to find Laura, and then you'll find Luke. That's what I usually do. Let's go back to this other conversation. Oh, look who's here. Look at that. Oh, the perfect oh, time. Yeah. Hi, Hi, hey, welcome back. I missed you. I missed you, Hello. too, honey. Luke? Hi. Where are you? Oh, Mom. Yeah? Uh, by any chance, did Joe Kelly call here? No, why would Joe Kelly be calling here? Uh, well, I, I just needed to talk <clears> to him, that's all. We told Rose that we would be here in case he called Kelly's. Oh, well, what's the big deal? Kelly's only 30 seconds away. Uh, Dad, the divorce decree isn't here yet, and we're a little bit worried. Oh. Well, yeah. Oh, I'm sure that uh, Joe's doing anything that has to be done. Well, we do know that Joe talked to Scott's attorney in Mexico today. Oh. Yeah, but we're still waiting. Uh, yeah. Look, baby, it's going to be all right. Just keep your chin up. Mm -hmm. Keep your chin up. That's it. <laughs> Listen, I gotta run over to Ruby's. It's her day off. I haven't talked to her in a long time. And you know, every once in a while we need a kind of heart to heart, all right? Okay. Oh, I'll yeah, yeah. You. Luke, um, glad you mentioned that because a little time of yours is what I need too. I would like us to have kind of a you know, little talk, the two of us. 
Oh, well, sure, anytime, whenever you say. Uh, later this afternoon, maybe about 6 at uh, her place. Uh, yeah, 6 o'clock is perfect. Great, we could all have dinner together. That'd be fun. Great, it's a date. However, stand notified, please, that Luke and I need a little time alone together. Oh, yes, First. sir. Yes, sir, boss. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The women Good. folk will just hide themselves in the dark. So I wish they would. Uh, yeah. I'll, all right, well, then I guess I'll, I'll, I'll see you later. Right. I'll see you later. Bye for now. Bye. It'll be fun. You'll like it. I will? Yeah. Okay, good. See ya. Uh, Dad. Yes? Look, um, I don't mean to be nosy or anything, but... Oh, uh, the old butt. <laughs> why do you want to talk to Luke alone? Honey, I just want to get to know him better. That's all. That's all? He is going to be part of the family very soon, sweetheart. Really? Okay, thanks. <laughs> If the divorce decree ever gets here, listen, I'm going to call Joe again, okay? Fine. Baldwin and Baldwin. Hi, Mary. It's Laura again. Oh, yes, Laura. I recognize your voice by now. Is Joe back yet? Yes, he is, but he's on the phone right now with the local postmaster. I'll tell him you called. Uh, yes. All right. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Damn, I can't stand this waiting. Yes. Hi. Hi. I'm sorry I took so long. Oh, that's all right. I'm just happy to see you. You seem upset. Something wrong? No, no, no. It's nothing. Come on, can't kid a kidder. Oh. No, I guess not. I'm on the second floor of the hospital. I walk past Monica. She's on the phone. Who do you think she's talking to? She's talking to my mother. What do you think they're planning on doing? They're going to have dinner together. Is that such a big deal? It's a big deal only in the sense that I'm starting to think that Monica is exerting a great deal of influence over my mother. Alan, is that what has you so upset? You know, it has me upset because it is starting to look to me like a conspiracy. It's almost as if the Quartermain women have banded together, they have risen, and now they're marching in the streets. Alan, I think you're exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating at all, believe me. My mother, I believe, is seriously considering taking over at ELQ. The next thing she'll be doing is running for the presidency. Aside from that, Monica's head now is all full of strange ideas that she got from God knows where, and it's almost as if she's trying to turn the tables on me. What do you mean, turn the tables? I don't know what I mean. Oh, forget about it. It's not important. I'm not even sure whether it isn't my mother that's trying to influence Monica. Alan, um, have you heard from Edward? <laughs> my father, he's in worse shape than anybody. I mean, as you know, he's in Paris finding out about the will, and the will is absolutely legal as it stands. It was notarized in Port Charles, it was notarized in Paris. And the codicil that he was so concerned about will stand just as it is. There's something else, though, Alan. I can feel it. What are you talking about? Something about Monica? About the divorce? Go away with you. You're dreaming. If something's wrong, I want to know. Nothing's wrong. I just hope she files for divorce soon. I don't think I can stand one more day of not being your wife. I don't think I can either. that they are talking about having my wedding in the rotunda of City Hall. I, I mean, it's, it's unreal. What am I going to wear? What kind of a dress could I possibly wear? Do you have any ideas? Well, I've been thinking about it. You have? Yeah. I, you know what I was thinking of? Do you remember when we used to sit and look through those old albums and they had all the pictures of the beautiful old the gowns on the ladies and there were yeah. the weddings, you remember? Uh -huh. And I was thinking about that one that we liked especially that was all kind of silk and lace. Oh, right. And I was wondering about something like that. And I thought we should get that album down and we should... Uh, look, what Do you know what... I don't know what I, I did it. with those... I put them 
away. All of the albums. Something. Hi. Hi, Dad. Oh, but he don't know. Don't know what? Do you, uh, where I put, uh, you wouldn't know, no, uh, the albums, the old photo albums. I put them away. Because they were sitting at, oh, uh, oh, I know where they are. No, I know exactly where they are. The old photo albums, I put them up in my closet. Uh, no, That's not yet. Where they are. Oh, hello. Good. Hi. Nothing from Joe, huh? No, not yet. Nothing. Oh, I'm glad you get Luke. I'm... Yeah, I'm going to go look uh, for those albums. How would you like to uh, come with me? Mm. Okay. Please, come in. Sit down. Uh, thank can you. I get your drink? Uh, no, thank you, sir. Sir? Sir? Luke, I think it's time you just call me Rick. Just plain Rick. I think I'll have that drink, Rick. Okay. Hey, uh, is this uh, all right? Oh, I love that. Good. I mean, it's no secret that you and I have never been um, close or maybe really in tune with each other, but uh, I got to tell you something. I, I've gained a lot of respect for you after this summer. You showed a lot of courage out there. Thank you. That uh, means a lot to me. Well, I mean it. I sincerely mean it. I also know that my daughter loves you very deeply. Well, I love her just as much. Look, what are your intentions? Well, that's the dumbest thing I have. Well, look, what I'm really trying to say is, what do you have in mind for the rest of Laura's life? I mean, what do you want her? I'm, I'm interested in my daughter. Please, sit down. And I, I care about her a great deal. Well, of course you do. Yeah. I mean, uh, Leslie has mentioned something about uh, job positions and so forth, but I... Well, yeah, it's true. I had some, some offers. They were mostly like nine to five gigs, you know, in offices and stuff. Uh, there was one glorified car salesman position, and, uh, well, I was asked to be the top host of the Versailles room, but... Uh, not your style. No, I'm afraid not. No, you deserve better than that. But at the same time, you've got to make a living, right? Well, of course, I know that. Uh, look, Laura knows something about me that maybe you don't. Yeah. I'm not Scott Baldwin. I'm well aware of that. And I think that's probably one of the most important reasons why Laura loves you so much. You are definitely an individual. But I don't think the two of you can spend the rest of your lives living on uh, romance and adventure and excitement. No, of course not. Um, you see, I, I, I still have some money left from the Quartermains. And I think that that will tie us over for, for a while. It'll give me the freedom to check out all the possibilities. And I will make her happy. And I will provide a good living for her. But I must make myself happy first by having self-respect. You know? Yes, I learned that the hard way myself. And that is the most important thing any man can have. Luke, I'm very glad you came by. Give us a chance to maybe understand each other a little better. I'm uh, not really a preacher type, but I've learned a few things because I've made some mistakes on the way. I want you to always be considerate of Laura. Just never stop loving her. I'll take good care of her, Rick. You know, Rick, it's Joe. Joe, uh, look, you better hold on a minute. There is somebody here who is desperate to talk to you. Thank you. Yeah. Hello, Joe. Hello, Luke. Um, I'm afraid I got some bad news. Kate. So, believe it or not, at this stage of the game, the divorce decree has been lost. Lost? What are you talking about, lost? Uh, look, I talked to the lawyer down in Mexico. He said the thing was sent over a week ago. I talked to the postmaster. He said that it's very common that uh, mail that come between countries would be misplaced. Yeah, yeah. It can also be misplaced between here and the other side of the room, Joe. The guy is in touch with Mexico, and he's put a tracer out for us. It'll be another day or two, but I got to tell you one more time, we got to hang in there. Yeah, and then what? Then at least we'll know where it is. Okay. Thank you for your help. What can I say, man? I'll, uh, I'll tell Laura. What a mess. Boy, am I glad I don't have to be there to hear Laura's reaction. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'd want to take a rain check on that one. You know, when I think about it, how, how badly those two want to get married, and then Scotty finally gives in only to have the divorce decree lost in the mail. If you don't mind, I'm going to call it a day. Oh, fine. No, Mary, thanks very much for the extra time. No problem. Good night, Joe. Have a good one, Mary. Oh, say, Joe, were you finally able to help Larvald win out? Well, I did all I could, but I'm afraid I wasn't much help, no. Oh, what a shame. Today at lunch, everybody in the deli was talking about Luke and Laura's wedding. I hope I didn't say something wrong. He's never been terribly fond of Laura. Oh, I thought that was all in the past. I'm afraid it isn't. Good night. Excellent. Now, we have to get you some of those little gloves, you know, with all right. the fingers. Sure. Missing. No, 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 no. This one I love. The bride that's wore black. <laughs> I hope that's black for your wedding. Oh, oh, that's it. oh, she was really beautiful. Yeah, that well, is beautiful. all brides are beautiful. Oh, Mom. What? I want to be as beautiful as you were at your wedding. Okay. And your grandmother at hers <laughs> and your great-grandmother at hers. You will be. You will. You will be as pretty as... <gasps> Wait a second. Oh, 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 ah, I found this. Do you remember this? Ta-da! Do I remember it? Yeah. It was yours. Yeah. Oh, great. I'll wear it. Sure, and you can. Yes, you can. It can be your something blue. Can you wear my something blue? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, you're going to be the most gorgeous bride ever. <laughs> we hope. Oh, I'm not prejudiced. I mean, your divorce decree was lost in the mail. <laughs>